In this video, we're going to learn about double displacement reactions. Double displacement reactions are going to be reactions that involve two ionic compounds, just like this one here. So I know these are ionic compounds because they involve a cation, which is a metal, and an anion, which is made up of nonmetals. Now, these anions happen to be polyatomic anions, and I have lead nitrate reacting with sodium carbonate. Now, one thing about double displacement reactions that you'll notice is that they're always going to be aqueous on the uh, left side of the reactions. You'll see these AQ symbols mean that they're dissolved in water. So these are separate compounds that would be mixed together. And for a double displacement reaction to occur, we have to make something that is not aqueous on the other side. So in this example, you can see that lead carbonate made a solid and sodium nitrate is aqueous. So this is a double displacement reaction because we actually made something we can see. Remember that if it's dissolved, we can't see it. It means it's uh, you know hidden in the water. So how did I know that the lead carbonate was going to be a solid? Well, there's a set of rules that um, we can follow to know what kind of compounds are going to dissolve, which will be aqueous, and which will not dissolve. So if a compound is soluble, that means uh, that the substance will dissolve in water. If it is insoluble, that means the substance will not dissolve in water. So right up here, soluble, this is aqueous. Down here, insoluble, that would be solid. So this is a set of rules, a chart to help guide you. There's a lot of these online. You can look it up. Just type in solubility rules into a search engine and you'll see all sorts of them. Um, but there's something you definitely want to learn and kind of memorize so you'll know these ones. Uh, so how this particular one works is that they tell us what kind of compounds are going to be soluble according to their anion. So NO3 compounds, nitrate compounds, are going to be soluble. They're going to be aqueous, and there's no exception. So no matter what the ion, uh, whatever cation is bonded to this, it's always going to dissolve. It's always going to be aqueous. Same thing here with acetate. No exceptions. Every metal that bonds with acetate will dissolve in water. The rest of them in this uh, top part of the chart do have exceptions. So most things that bond with chloride will dissolve except for silver, mercury, or lead. So you can see if that is involved in the compound with chloride, it will be soluble, be insoluble. Um, and then over here, we're looking at compounds that are going to make insoluble things, so solid things. And then there's also exceptions over here. So almost everything that bonds to sulfide will be solid, but there are some exceptions. So Ammonium sulfide would be soluble. Uh, an alkali metal, so anything in group 1 in the periodic table, will be soluble. And then you could see calcium, strontium, and barium. So that's how this one works. We're going to use this to see if we can't uh, predict the products of a couple examples here. So the way a double displacement reaction works is that the metals are going to swap places with one another. That's why they call it double displacement. The metals are going to switch and they're going to trade their anions. Now, when I go to write the compounds on the other side, they are going to be ionic compounds, so I will have to consider the charges on the ions. So these subscripts here, the Na2, that 2 doesn't necessarily come over to the other side. I may not need two sodiums to bond with the fluoride. So sodium will bond with fluoride, potassium will bond with the carbonate. So I always have to look at charges to determine how many of each I need. And then I'll just mention one other thing before I start solving this that you'll want to do before you start writing the products is figure out if you're actually going to make anything that is insoluble on the other side. So what I like to do is check out the compounds that will be formed. Sodium is going to bond with fluoride. Check the solubility rules to see if that's actually going to make something that will be a solid. Because remember, if we don't make anything that's insoluble, no reaction actually took place. So let's check it out. Sodium and fluoride. Now, this particular chart is describing 
uh, if things will be soluble or insoluble based on the anion. And fluoride's not in here. Now you can look up other solubility charts and, and find uh, more expanded ones. But um, if you notice, every insoluble compound here, they'd mentioned these are all going to make insoluble things. The exception um, that we see consistent here are alkali metals. And alkali metals are going to be soluble. They're up here no matter what they're bonded to. So sodium is an alkali metal. It's in group 1 on the periodic table. Right here in group 1. And any of these alkali metals are going to form uh, soluble compounds. They'll always do it no matter what they're attached to. So the sodium fluoride, well that's going to be soluble. How about the potassium carbonate? So once again, potassium right here in group 1, it's an alkali metal as well. And so since it's an alkali metal, it's not going to form something that's insoluble. And so this reaction won't actually take place. So I can just say no reaction. And the reason is because I didn't make anything that was insoluble. Let's look at the next one. So I have sodium hydroxide bonding with calcium bromide. So once again, they're going to swap places with each other. The sodium is going to bond to the bromide. Now I remember from the previous example, sodium is in group one. It's not going to form something that's solid. So I know I'm not going to get a solid when sodium and bromide uh, react. But how about when calcium and uh, hydroxide react? Let's check out those solubility rules. Right down here, hydroxide is insoluble. So compounds that include hydroxide are insoluble. But there are some exceptions. The way that this chart is set up is that uh, these exceptions will form an aqueous substance. Well, we'll be soluble. So we'll check to see if that calcium is in there and it is. And so this one will not make a reaction either. So no reaction. So let's try one more. And so this one we have lead nitrate that's reacting with hydrochloric acid over here. And this is an ionic compound, even though it doesn't look like it, because we know hydrogen is a nonmetal and chloride is a nonmetal. But this is the hydrogen ion, so it's an H plus ion. So it's going to work just like any of the other double displacement reactions we've seen, where we're going to have those two cations swapping places with each other. So I'm going to end up with hydrogen bonding to nitrate. And let's check this one out. See that compounds that contain nitrate are always going to be aqueous. There's no exceptions to that. And then the next one here is lead is going to move in here and bond with the chloride. So we have to check if lead chloride will be soluble. So chloride is here. It says that compounds that contain chloride are soluble. They'll be aqueous. But here's the exceptions, and lead is the exception. So that means lead chloride will be solid. So let's go ahead and write down what these new compounds are going to be. So we'll start with hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to bond with the nitrate. Remember that I'm not necessarily going to bring two nitrates over to the other side. And uh, the charge on nitrate is minus one. The charge on hydrogen is positive one because hydrogen is here in group one. Everything there have a positive one charge. So I only need one of each. We'll have one hydrogen and one nitrate. And it's not going to be solid. It's going to be aqua. It's going to be dissolved. And that is going to be added to the lead and the chloride that are going to bond. So lead is over here. It's a transition metal and so it could take on a number of different charges. But we know it's charged because over on this side uh, it's bonded to two nitrates. Remember the charge on nitrate is minus one. There's two of them, which means the lead has to have a two plus charge. It's going to keep that charge over to the other side. Chloride, on the other hand, has a minus one charge because it's in group seven. Everything here has a minus one charge. And so I need two chlorides to balance out that lead. So I'm going to end up with PbCl2. That is solid. I just have to go ahead and balance this now. And I have um, two chlorides over here, but only one over here. And I have two nitrates over here, but only 
one over here. So what I can do is I could put a two right there. And then you could see that the nitrates are balanced now, but the hydrogen was thrown out of balance. I have two here and I have one here, but I also have two chlorides here and only one here. So put a two right there and then we are balanced.